There's a 68 year old man with a juxtarenal abdominal aortic aneurysm. You can see the axle cuts on the left and the surface render images on the right. There was a patent IMA which is coming out of the aneurysm. The initial plan after fusing the CT scan to the patient was to embolize the uh, IMA preemptively. The yellow circle represents the origin of the IMA and the uh, purple line shows the, the stem of the IMA and then the uh, center line. You can see how the catheter passes into this. We actually got a little dissection in this initially, uh, but went on to embolize this uh, with coils. Once that was occluded, and these are interlock coils which are being placed here. Uh, these are from Boston Scientific. Uh, we then went on to place the stink graft. You always start off really with taking the fenestrated component and then orienting it on the patient. Make sure you can identify the relevant renal fenestrations in the SMA. It's then delivered up over a 260 ampla super stiff wire. This is a critical part. The images are fused. We'll show you what these represent uh, shortly. And what we're doing is lining up the renal fenestrations. And this is by rotating the graft. Sometimes you've got to advance it and retract it in order to get it completely aligned. And as I say, it's worthwhile taking some time here. You can see uh, the marks basically on either side representing the origins of the uh, renal vessels. Now, at this point in time, you can actually uh, deploy the fenestrated component. Here we've marked in what the various different uh, the uh, fusion marks actually represent. And now that we've deployed the fenestrated component, you can see where the fenestrations actually are, and they look like they're really well aligned uh, onto the origins of the, of the renal artery. So with that, you know, actually complete the deployment of the fenestrated component. Next is to... Uh, puncture the diaphragm of the fan and bring up uh, uh, sheaths. Uh, these are uh, ansel sheaths which are brought up into position. You've got to ensure that the wire is actually inside the fan. Usually you can deflect it off the top of the fenestrated component. Make sure you're not outside it. And you two of these basically are placed up inside the fenestrated component so that you can wire both the uh, right and the left uh, renal arteries. At this point in time, we switched out uh, for... Uh, a catheter which we're going to use to select the origin uh, and so what you want to do is you got to get that wire through the fenestration once through the fenestration you want it to go down the uh, left renal lorry and again what we're looking at here is the center line of the left renal lorry and the orifice it really looked like it's well aligned uh, once you get the, the wire in there's always some deformation of these uh, arteries once you put devices into them so that's why it doesn't completely align uh, but you get a pretty good idea that it's going down at the left renal artery. Here we've actually brought the uh, the diagnostic catheter wire up and over the top it's hanging up on the fenestration so for that reason we're going to uh, remove the catheter and replace it with a quick cross catheter. They will almost always uh, reliably follow the catheter. So We've switched out for a quick cross. Quick cross has been bounced off the uh, still enclosed uh, apex of the fenestrated component. And once you get the quick cross in place, we uh, will advance a uh, will advance a rosin wire into position. Once we have the rosin wire in position, uh, we will replace the dilator for the sheath and advance the sheath over the rosin wire into the left brain lorry. So rosin wire is now in place. You often have to pull the wire down to give the uh, sheath a little bit more of a favorable angle. We're confirming through the um, quick cross that we're actually inside the renal artery before replacing uh, the rosin wire and then advancing the sheath into position. So that's the rosin wire now being advanced. And you can see the sheath has been brought up into the origin. It's hanging up just a little bit. Uh, we did actually do inspiration and expiration, and that didn't make much difference. And so it's a matter of ad ad using the apex of the enclosed fin to advance the sheath down into the left green lorry, and then we'll uh, pull the entire uh, delivery system down into place. So here we can see we're, we're, we're pulling the um, delivery system of that sheath down to give it a nice angle. Tension now turns to the right side, again, punk to the diaphragm of the uh, cook sheath, 
And we basically did exactly the same thing on the other side. In fact, it was easier on the other side uh, to actually wire uh, the, the fenestration. Again, this, this was fairly easy in this case because they were very nicely aligned. That's the whole key. The one thing it can really hang you up for a long time is actually trying to wire these rain lorries. And then the same idea, we replaced, uh, we got a rosin wire, sheath's been advanced up into place, sheath dilator has been removed. Um, we will then place uh, two VBX stents. The dimensions of all of the devices which we used will be shown at the end of this presentation. We were checking there that there was enough wire up and over the arch because now we're going to go ahead and deploy the fin. The VBXs are in the sheath in position. Uh, the apex of the um, fenestrated component is going to be deployed. You will see this. We advance uh, the nose cone. Now the super uh, renal stents basically are, are deployed and in position. And at this point in time, uh, we are in a position where we can dock the delivery system into the nose cone. That gives a nice transition. And now we're going to remove the entire thing. Uh, this is the one chance you've got to go ahead and, and uh, balloon the aorta because once these um, VBXs are deployed, you're not going to be able to do that. So we almost always take that opportunity. Uh, we use a coat of balloons brought up into place. Remember that the VBXs are still protected inside uh, the ansel sheaths. And so we've dilated the, the, the fabric uh, of the neck. Coat has been removed. Now we're actually withdrawing the ansel sheath. Uh, you you optimize uh, for the left renal fan. You can see it's beautifully aligned. That green circle is now a line. Um, and we have this projecting three millimeter, three to four millimeter into the aura. We've deployed it. And as we take it down, we uh, re-advance the sheath into position. Now we're going to take a 10 by 2 balloon, uh, which is uh, barely inserted into this. It's really to flare out the proximal end of the of EBX. Now you can see it's barely inside, we're pushing up on this. And then as we deflate, same idea is that we're going to advance the sheath up and over that balloon uh, back inside the left wing lorry. The balloon will be removed. And then, of course, before we give up those wires, we're going to we shoot an angiogram. We've got a couple of different uh, uh, stages to go. And you can see that nice uh, picture and no obvious evidence of a leak. Uh, at the level of the fan. You essentially repeat the process basically on the other side. We've optimized in this fan this time, um, deploying the VBX, slowly deflate the VBX while advancing the sheath. Sheath goes back up into the uh, VBX. And once again, you bring up a 10 by 2 a balloon. Uh, to flare the proximal line. We did all of that. Then we pulled down with, uh, because we're going to complete the, the, uh, the distal. And so once again, we bring up the bifurcated graft really into position. You can see where the, the IMA has been marked. We need to know where the bifurcation is. And this is more or less like a standard uh, cook uh, inferino graft at this particular point in time. And it's been deployed. It's been oriented so the right gate is a little anterior. And then we're going to remove uh, the entire device. <clears throat> you see it's been recaptured. You butt the nose cone up against the uh, mandrel and you got to make sure you hold the sheath and don't pull the sheath out at this point in time. And we're going to have to extend that side. The reason we didn't mark where the internal iliac was. <clears throat> So at this point, orienting for optimal visualization of the internal iliac artery, we're going to complete the right side, first of all. And this is all, these angles, of course, are all calculated. You can see that red mark is a fusion mark, which shows the origin of the internal iliac. They really don't deform much. Um, we've confirmed it. Uh, place the il right iliac limb. And it's just... Uh, pin and pull in order to deploy this and say uh, this is a fairly simple step. So the limb has been unsheathed. Uh, 
almost complete. Now it's deployed. And again, we're going to track the nose cone. It's coming down through the graph really nicely. Just what you have to watch it just doesn't hang up. Then you take the delivery system out. Now attention turn to the other side, pick the old markers back in, so we actually measure exactly what the length is going to be, down to the internal iliac, now we've got right anterior oblique, again, uh, the, the fusion mark nicely depicts where it is, it's right on, and so we now have the left iliac limb has been inserted, and it's going to be deployed. So again, pin and pull to deploy that left iliac limb. And you can confirm that you haven't covered the hypogastric and then uh, balloon both the iliac limbs and then the overlap between the main body and the fan. Again, you got to be cognizant of where the uh, renal stents come off. Uh, it's the mushroom at the top of the uh, gate. Uh, we usually balloon everything, just a matter of habit. We really have seen uh, clue, limb occlusions, but we have seen it. And you go over onto the other side. You know, hypergastric flowing nicely. There's a list of all the devices that were used in this case. The coils I didn't mention were um, interlock coils from Boston Scientific. And then we'll show a completion angiogram. We did this in two stages. Uh, both renals fell, SMA fells. You can look at the lateral if you're concerned about it. We did shoot distally, and you can see retrograde flow from the iliac and then ilia lumbar aurea. There's a little endoleak distally. But we stopped at that point. The patient did uh, very well. It was discharged the following day. Uh, thank you very much.